Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and in today's video I would like to tell you about character encoding in Python. Now, first things first, what is character encoding? Let's say that you have a text file on your computer, then you're probably inclined to think of that file as containing characters, as containing text. Um, but really, when you think of it, this file contains bytes because everything in your computer, including text files, is made of bytes. So a text file is just a collection of bytes. So if you want to take the contents for, of the text file and render it, for example, as characters, as text on your computer screen, then you need to somehow interpret those bytes as uh, characters. So you need some kind of lookup table that says, okay, this byte corresponds to this character and that byte corresponds to that character, corresponds to that character, etc. And this lookup table is a character encoding. Now, this wouldn't be so tricky if it weren't for the fact that there are actually multiple of those lookup tables. So there are lots of different character encodings. And what you very often see is that in a particular situation, the wrong character encoding is, is chosen. And then you get some text that contains very strange characters. And I'm sure you're familiar with this, right? If you receive some kind of email and your name, you have a special character in your name, and that, that special character is rendered as a question mark or something very strange. What has, what has happened then at some point in the process is that the wrong character encoding has been applied. And I would say character encoding problems are the number one source of bugs in software. So what I want to show you here in this video is A, just get a very concrete understanding of what character encoding is so that you know how to apply that to your own Python code, Python 3, I should say, not Python 2, this is about Python 3, so that you know how to apply that to your own Python code and avoid these very nasty and unnecessary character encoding bugs. Okay, so let's get started. So I have a text file um, and it's called some text. So what I'm going to do is read this text file and I'm going to read it as a binary file so that it's just a collection of bytes because that's what it really is. So how does that work in Python? I'm going to say with open some text um, and then I'm going to specify a mode R for, for reading, the B for bytes and then I say SF and then I say, okay, I'm going to have a byte string and it is up f.read. So I'm going to read the contents from the file as a binary file because I've spent, specified here that I want to read it as a binary file. And I'm going to assign it to byte string. And just to show you what comes out, I will print out the type of byte string. Okay. Now you see the type of byte string after I've done that is bytes. So there are two um, main sort of text-like object types in Python. Python 3, I should say. The first is bytes. That's the very basic one that I'm doing here. And bytes is essentially a collection of a collection of bytes with no particular character coding asso associated with them. And a str, an str, is of course also a collection of bytes because everything is, but it has a character encoding associated with it. Um, and normally, if you open uh, a text file, Python will automatically convert it to str. Python 3 will do that. But here I've forced, essentially prevented Python from doing that by opening it as a binary file so that we can see in more detail actually what happens with the character encoding here. Okay, so um, byte string is a collection of bytes and we can actually print out the individual bytes really easily. So if I say for, scroll up, for ch character, it's a bit misleading actually. I see H is often used for, for, for bytes in a character-like situation, but really they're bytes, they're numbers. For CH in byte string, I'll print it out, print CH, uh, and uh, separate them by space. Okay. So here we see that there are nine bytes in byte string, 118, 111, 2128. Um, and this is all there is to it, to byte string. If I would print it in some kind of other way, sometimes you would actually get a text-like representation with characters, but that would be an interpretation already. A character encoding would have been implicitly applied. Um, whereas what I'm doing here is just looking at the byte string as such, the bytes in the byte string. Okay, that's it. We have our byte string. But of course, um, we know that this byte string contained corresponds to some kind of text. And actually we want to find out what this text is. So what do these bytes mean? Now, now character encoding comes into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bytes object, byte string, we're going to apply the decode function, and the decode function takes a character encoding, and it turns the bytes object to a str object. And then the str object, that is our text-like representation that we really want to have. But the tricky thing is that in order to get the str object, we need to know the character encoding. And that's where a lot of things can go wrong. So. What we do, we have our byte string, Oop. 
And then we say dot decode. So that's the function or the method, as they say, that converts the byte string to a str object. And it needs to have a character encoding. Now in a character encoding, they have names. Um, UTF-8 is one particular character encoding. So what I'm going to do now is try to interpret these nine bytes above here as though they are made up, uh, as though they are UTF-8 text. Um, just to show you that what we get is str, I will put type around it, run it, and then you say, okay, str, right? So very important to know, bytes plus the decode function and an encoding will give you a str object. Important to know. Okay, so what, what kind of str object do we get here actually? So I run it, okay. Um, I would say the first four, four letters make some kind of sense, voile, um, and then we get this, which suggests maybe that it should be voila, but um, it, it looks pretty funky. Maybe it's the wrong uh, character encoding. So let's try another one because there are many different character encodings and we just don't know, right? We have some bytes and we, we are on our own trying to figure out what the character encoding is. So another one that's used a lot is Latin one. Okay, voile is the same. Why? Well, because character encodings tend to differ only in the more complicated characters, so to say. The basic normal ASCII characters, just the basic letters of the Latin alphabet, they tend to be the same. But things that have characters or, you know, just accents or Chinese characters, etc., they that's where they differ. Uh, and for that reason, you see that the first four letters are the same between UTF-8 and Latin 1, but then something goes wrong here. Okay, so neither of these are very uh, satisfactory. Then of course, we also have the ASCII character encoding, which is like the mother of all character encodings. Let's see what happens if we try to decode this as ASCII. Up, oh, we get a Unicode decode error. Something goes wrong. This can definitely not be ASCII. Why not? Well, because ASCII is a lookup table, which only defines the first 128 bytes. Um, and if you have a string that has higher byte numbers, and we do, for example, here we have 226, it cannot possibly be ASCII. Um, and therefore, if we try to force ASCII on it, we get a Unicode decode error, saying that ASCII codec can't encode byte blah, blah, blah in position four, right? So this is definitely not ASCII. Now, um, so the bottom line here is that we, an important, a very important point is that there is no possible way in order to, for us to detect, to, to know with certainty what the character encoding of this particular byte string is. That information is simply not there. If we want to apply a character encoding, we have to either guess what the correct character encoding is, for example, because we know that it comes from a Linux system and Linux tends to use UTF-8, or someone needs to tell us. We need to know where the, where the, where the byte string comes from, and based on that, we need to we know what the encoding is, right? So this is not one of these problems that you sit down and you think very hard about it, and then at some point you will find out the character encoding. It doesn't work like that. You have to either guess, or someone needs to tell you. Um, so, and here, someone tells us, uh, can tell us, because actually this, this byte string comes from a, uh, a blog that I wrote about character encoding in Python, in Python 2, actually, it was an old blog. Um, and it goes like this, special characters are a pain for programmers and a source of bugs. Whenever your code contains an accented letter, voila, funny looking symbols appear. So here I was trying to be funny by actually uh, sort of uh, garbling the A in voila, sort of to illustrate the problem, uh, the effects that you get when you apply the wrong character encoding. So actually this looks very strange, um, but it's nevertheless correct. And the UTF-8 character encoding is therefore correct. So we know that the UTF-8 character encoding is correct, not because we have deduced this logically or anything, but just because we know where the source comes from, and then we see, okay, that's actually correct. Right? Um, okay, so now you know the basics about reading text as bytes and then transforming them to str objects, um, and for that you need a character encoding. Now, what I did in this example first was read text as a binary, read essentially treat the file as though it contains binary data, uh, just for, for illustrative purposes. But normally Python will actually do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So it goes like this, right? So all of the above goes more or less like this. With open, and then we read again from some text. Um, and then I say, well, the encoding is UTF-8, SF. And then I say S is f.read. Okay, and then I print out the type, S, up. Then you see I get a str. In other words, 
if I don't, um, if I open some text uh, in a normal Pythonic way, it will automatically treat it as a text file. But in order to actually take the bytes from that text file and turn it into a str object, it needs to have an encoding. Now, if I would remove the encoding bit, it would still work. Does that mean that there's no encoding has been applied? No, it just means that Python falls back to a default encoding, which could be incorrect. And the default encoding, oh, the default encoding in this particular case is UTF-8, so it doesn't make any difference. But it is an encoding is always applied. Now, so, so far we've seen how you can read from a text file and the same principle would essentially apply if you, for example, get, get data from the internet or just data, text like data enters your program in any other kind of way. Of course, your program also outputs uh, text quite often. So let's say, how do you write text data to a text file? First, we're going to again treat our, uh, our file as though it contains binary data so that we can see in a bit more detail how the actual character encoding is handled. So first what we're going to do, right, we're going to take our str f uh, that we have here, str s, sorry, that we've written from some text, and we're actually going to turn it again into a byte stream. That's very easy. We just say s.encode, up, and then we specify an encoding, and then we get a byte stream. So encode is essentially the opposite of decode. So you take a str, you call encode, you specify an encoding, and then you get a bytes object. And that bytes object, you can then rewrite to a binary file. So I can say with open output.txt. Then I'm going to specify a mode. So the W for I'm going to write to it and the B for I'm going to write bytes to it. It's going to be binary data, SF. And then I say f.write my byte string. Oh, that works. And now I've created output.txt and it contains, uh, contains a UTF-8 encoded uh, text. It's just bytes, but it corresponds to UTF-8 encoded text. Um, just like you can uh, automatically have Python automatically handle the encoding for you when you're reading text, you can also do that when you're writing text. So basically what I did above, oh, open output uh, corresponds.txt. Um, if I just say W for writing, it will open it as a text file. Then I say, okay, the encoding that I want to use is UTF-8 and I say sf, and then I say f.write, and then I just write the s, so I write my str object directly. Yep. And it will do the exact same thing, right? So the difference here is that open will actually already implicitly handle this encoding, whereas here we've done that automatically. Okay, so now you've, th these are the basics of character encoding. So what do, you, what, what do you need to know? A, you need to be very, very aware that a text file is just a collection of bytes, and if you render it, as characters on your screen, you're interpreting those bytes. And in order for that for, to do that, you need to know the character encoding. That's one important thing to know. The second important thing to know is that you cannot logically deduce the character encoding of a text file. You have to either guess it based on whatever kind of clues that you have, or someone needs to tell you, or you need to know where it comes from, or you need to have some kind of extra contextual information that indicates what the, what the character encoding is. Then, uh, the best way to actually deal with this in real software is to, as soon as text enters your program, you decode it to str. So basically you read from a text file and the first thing that you do is you decode it to str. And then in your program, you only work with str objects. You avoid bytes objects whenever, whenever it's, you can avoid them and you usually can. Don't use byte, byte objects in your code. And then when you're writing it, for example, to a text file or you're outputting it in some other way, at the very, very last moment, when, when you really need to, then you encode your str objects to bytes objects so that they leave your program, right? So uh, decode as soon as possible, encode as late as possible and work with str objects. That's the basic uh, strategy. Now, thank you very much for your attention. I hope this uh, clarified. Uh, clarified one or two things for you. And uh, please do the world a favor by writing a bug-free code that does not contain very weird, unnecessary characters. Thank you.